we have created sort of a phrase that we use, and we've used it all season, when something is either, when someone's achieving or something happens at such a high level that it warrants special consideration. And that is Pate State Material. And Pate State Material is the label that we put on Dave Aranda several months ago. And he reaffirmed it last night. They played Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl. They beat Ole Miss and they not only win the Big 12, they win the Sugar Bowl. They cap a 12-2 and two season emphatically. They were 2-7 and seven a year ago. So Dave Aranda turns it around overnight. Uh, Dave Aranda is he's getting a lot of praise today, as he should. We've been praising him all year, and this really had a turning point for me in the middle of the year. If you've been watching the show all year, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Dave Aranda wins two games last year. He wins 12 games this year. His attitude doesn't change whatsoever. He just perma he permanently looks like a guy in the waiting room at a dentist office. Even when they pour the Gatorade on him or when he loses a game, it's just always the same. Very even keeled. So why am I talking about Dave Aranda specifically tonight? Well, it is because he had a big win yesterday. But there's something bigger happening here as it relates to college football as a whole. The Big 12 and college football as a whole. And it's one of the major takeaways for me from this entire season and moving forward. So follow me here for just a second, because you may think if you're a Colorado fan, it really doesn't pertain to you. Oh, it does. It always does, because anytime anyone is succeeding, other administrators are watching, because everyone wants to duplicate success. So for a little while there, it looked like the only model that was ever going to work for success from this point moving forward was go find an offensive coach and score 45 points a game. Then you got a little defensive renaissance in a renaissance year, and then Brent Venables gets a shot, Dave Aranda's already got a shot, and Dave Aranda's shining. Um, Marcus Freeman gets a shot at Notre Dame. So there's a very cyclical nature to the sport. But Dave Aranda is a guy specifically that I've circled that I think is going to be a rock star. And I didn't know a whole lot about him as a person before this year. Like as a coach and a person, I, I'd observed him from afar. We got to spend some time closer to him this year, especially during the week of that Oklahoma game where they ended up upsetting the Sooners. I have zero doubt he's legit after this year and kind of being close to him for that week, I have zero doubt that he's different, too. That's the key that I want to hone in on a little bit here, because as he gets more attention, which he will, more people will pick up on this. I just want us to be a little bit ahead of the curve. And a lot of people are going to have fun with it. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you see the monitor behind me. That demeanor, that's always his demeanor. Whether they're winning by 40 or losing by 40, that's always his demeanor. Now, a lot of people are going to have fun with that. It's, it's going to be good-natured. But people are going to joke about it because they don't understand it. And I just want to make sure you understand that's not a joke. That guy's not putting on an act for you. That really is the way his mind's working. It is, it is so process-oriented, over-result-oriented, that there is really no room to celebrate. And you may think, well, that's no way to live life. Well, it's no way to live life if you're normal. By the very nature of what it takes to achieve at this level, you can't be normal. Normal guys don't pan out in this sport at the highest level. Normal guys don't really pan out at any, in, in any industry at the highest level. Average people don't, don't make it that high. Dave Aranda's not average, and you should be happy that he's not if you're a Baylor fan. But Aranda's the first guy I've been around that rubs me the same way that Nick Saban rubs me. I've been around Saban a lot. I was around Dave Aranda this year, and when I say he rubs me the same way Nick Saban does, I'm not doing the A-B comparison. I'm not saying he's the next Nick Saban, because no one knows that. What I'm saying is Nick Saban, when you're around him, he exudes that process over result attitude. And you have long since been able to have fun at the expense of the way Nick Saban carries himself. And he participates in it, like he gets it, he understands. Nick Saban's kind of a showman, even though he doesn't exude it, he understands, like he's got, a, he's got a role and he's got a persona that has been established out there in the public ether, he gets it. So he plays along with it. Dave Aranda, a lot younger and a lot newer to the scene, so he's still trying to feel his way out a little, but Dave Aranda's like that. Dave Aranda's not putting on an act. Like Dave Aranda, you're never going to see him outwardly celebrate a whole lot. Dave Aranda's the kind of guy that's very even keeled, but he does not afford himself 
time to focus on the results because it's all about process. Now, here's where that really slapped me in the face. This year, when we were at the Oklahoma game, they upset Oklahoma. The, the field gets stormed, and they have put themselves in the driver's seat for the Big 12 championship game, and it was the biggest win in several years for the program. And it was a noon game, so we got to get out of there pretty quickly. We met with Dave Aranda after the game. And he's just come out of an exuberant locker room, as they should be. And we were in his post-game press conference, and I asked him, you know, about, about the previous week, because they had lost to TCU the previous week. And I asked him what impact that TCU loss had on today's result. And he said, I think it had a big impact. And then he said, that's how I know we really haven't arrived yet. He said, I really, I view it as a failure on my part that it mattered. He said, we've got to get to a point where it doesn't matter. I think that sort of sounded like coach speak and it flew over a lot of people's heads. It just sounded like a throwaway comment. It's worth its weight in gold because he's not participating in coach speak. That's an entire life philosophy that he's choosing to share with you there. He was serious. He walked out of that locker room and whereas the normal folks are looking at it and saying, oh, good for you, look at you, you should be doused in champagne. He's saying, it's a shame that we played at such a high level today after we lost. Because what he's saying is, it took an external factor to maximize my team's performance. Instead of me being able to instill in them the concept that you should be able to perform at a maximum level every week because you should be focused on process and internals over anything external. That was a fascinating glimpse into his mind. I didn't know that that's the kind of guy he was. I do now. But it's very interesting now. I told you this relates to college football and this relates sort of to the Big 12. It's ironic that Baylor played Ole Miss last night. Because Dave Aranda had options, and Dave Aranda chose to stay at Baylor. Lane Kiffin is at Ole Miss because he didn't have any other major options. And I think a lot of those details will come to light a little bit more after this season. But those two guys, those two guys were in a very different situation. They'll both be back at their respective universities next year. Uh, and I'm not here to talk about Lane Kiffin, but it was very interesting. Those Dave Aranda had an opportunity to get out of Waco. A lot of people would have taken it. Dave Aranda's not like a lot of people. Dave Aranda looked and said, this is where I want to be. In fact, he told us that day, think we can accomplish big things at Baylor? I want to be at Baylor. He kind of deadpanned it. He had a flat face and he said it. And I think a lot of people let it go in one ear and out the other. Well, now he put his money where his mouth is and he's staying at Baylor. And it's an inflection point in the Big 12. Because Oklahoma's not going to be there much longer. Texas not going to be there much longer. The big question is, in that post-Longhorn Sooner world, who benefits from the excess amount of oxygen now in the room? Why not Baylor? Why wouldn't it be Baylor? He, they're in a prime position right now. It's a really good time to be a Baylor fan. And as you look from a distance, if your program's in a position to hire a head coach in the next 18 to 36 months, I'm not saying go get Dave Aranda. If you could pull that off, it'd be a miracle for your program. It's not that. It's every time a new kind of guy has success, Sam Pittman, same way at Arkansas, then everyone in the industry is asking, who's our Sam Pittman? Who's the next Dave Aranda? And it's good. It's always good because then it creates a new pool of potential candidates that to that point maybe wouldn't have been considered for a head coaching job. And so that is really good because then it turns over a new layer of topsoil at the head coaching level and gives guys opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have had. So Dave Aranda could end up impacting your program or he could just beat your program or he could do both. We'll see.